in the hidden hangars of southern India, a quiet revolution was taking shape. Engineers, dismissed by global skeptics, were crafting something no one expected, a stealth fighter designed and built entirely on Indian soil. For decades, India bought protection from others. Now it was building its own shield, its own sword. No grand announcement, no public unveiling, just a steady hum of machines and the vision of autonomy taking flight. The world's attention was elsewhere when the blueprints emerged, sleek and secretive. By the time anyone noticed, India's stealth had already taken form and it was invisible. The roots of India's stealth dream stretched back to the 1990s, when the country realized that imported fighters even advanced ones like the Su-30 MKI couldn't guarantee strategic autonomy. Conflicts in Kajal and recurring border tensions underscored a hard truth. Air superiority must be sovereign. The vision for a homegrown fifth-generation fighter began within the Defense Research and Development Organization DRDO and its subsidiary, the Aeronautical Development Agency ADA. These institutions had already delivered the Tejas light combat aircraft, a milestone that proved Indian engineers could design and fly indigenous jets. But stealth was an entirely different game one that demanded mastery of radar absorption, precision aerodynamics, and data fusion. The AMCA project was born not from arrogance, but necessitated a decision to break dependency and claim technological self-reliance by 2010, as global powers unveiled their stealth fleets. India's scientists quietly began designing one of their own. Every breakthrough begins with frustration. India's early stealth ambitions faced crushing obstacles, most notably the Kaveri engine project, an ambitious but troubled effort to create a domestic jet engine. Years of research yielded limited thrust and reliability, forcing India to rely on imported power plants. The joint FGFA program with Russia, meant to adapt the Su-57 into an Indian stealth variant, collapsed under disagreements over cost and technology sharing. Critics called the dream unrealistic. But these failures were invaluable. They taught Indian engineers how not to design a stealth aircraft, the setbacks hardened resolve within the DRDO and ADA, convincing them that the only path forward was full ownership of the process. Lessons from THOS development particularly in composite materials, fly-by-wire control, and aerodynamics became the foundation for AMCA. By the mid-2010s, India had learned enough to stop borrowing stealth and start inventing it. The Advanced Medium Combat Aircraft, or AMCA, emerged as India's answer to a regional arms race dominated by China's J-20. Mighty Dragon and America's F-35, conceived as a twin-engine multi-role stealth fighter, the AMCA would bridge the gap between air dominance and deep strike capability. Its design centered on low observability with internal weapons bays, radar absorbent materials, and an angular airframe that scattered radar waves. Engineers envisioned two versions MK-1, powered by proven foreign engines, and MK-2, equipped with a future indigenous power plant under development with international partners. The AMCA would integrate advanced avionics infrared search systems and network-centric warfare capabilities, allowing it to fight as part of an integrated digital battle web. Unlike earlier projects, it was built for modularity and export potential, signaling India's confidence as both builder and supplier. For the first time, New Delhi wasn't just buying stealth, it was designing it on its own terms. Stealth isn't achieved through shape alone, it's a symphony of engineering. The AMCA team had to overcome four formidable barriers, radar signature reduction, thermal management, materials science, and software fusion. India lacked prior experience in radar absorbent coatings, so researchers turned to indigenous nanocomposite materials developed at DRDO labs. Engineers refined the airframe's curvature through thousands of computational fluid dynamics simulations, shaving away every reflection point that radar could exploit. Then came the problem of heat. Stealth fighters emit immense infrared signatures from their engines. So the AMCA's exhaust geometry was redesigned for temperature diffusion. Onboard systems had to talk to each other flawlessly combining radar, EU, and infrared data into a single coherent picture for the pilot. Every success was incremental, but together they marked a revolution in Indian aerospace engineering. Where earlier jets revealed ambition, the AMCA revealed capability. Building stealth meant mobilizing an entire nation's industry. India opened its defense sector to private players like Tata Advanced Systems, Larsen and Tubro and Adani Defense, transforming the AMCA into a consortium rather than a government monopoly. HAL remained the lead integrator, but dozens of smaller firms provided composites, avionics, and digital flight control modules. The government's Atmanirbha Borat initiative self-reliant, India was no longer rhetoric. It became a production pipeline. Even universities and startups contributed, developing 3D printed components and advanced test algorithms. International partners France, the UK, and the US applied select technologies under restricted agreements. This synergy of state and private enterprise was unprecedented in Indian defense history. For once, the nation's engineers weren't chasing a blueprint, they were writing one. Before the AMCA could fly, it had to prove it could survive. India constructed an advanced Iron Bird test facility to simulate every control surface. 
engine response, and avionics system before actual assembly. The National Wind Tunnel Complex in Bengaluru became one of Asia's most sophisticated, allowing engineers to validate stealth aerodynamics under varying speeds and atmospheric conditions. Extensive radar cross-section tests were conducted using scale models to evaluate electromagnetic signatures. Virtual simulations ran for months to fine-tune stealth coatings that could withstand tropical climates and high-G stress. Flight control software was tested through thousands of digital sorties long before a pilot entered the cockpit. The AMCA wasn't built in secrecy it was forged through discipline. Each test narrowed the gap between concept and flight. By 2028, India aimed for its first prototype rollout a moment decades in the making. India's pursuit of stealth isn't vanity its survival strategy, with China's J-20 already operational and Pakistan seeking next-generation aircraft from Beijing. India faced the prospect of falling behind in aerial deterrence. The AMCA stealth would give the Indian Air Force a tool to penetrate defended airspace, strike high-value targets, and vanish before enemy sensors could react. It would complement the Su-30 and Rafael fleets while paving the way for six-generation systems. Strategically, the AMCA serves as both deterrent and equalizer a signal that India will no longer rely solely on alliances or imports for security. Every rivet carries a geopolitical message, that sovereignty in the air is sovereignty on the ground. The AMCA's path is ambitious, but fragile. The biggest vulnerability lies in its engine dependency. The program still relies on imported power plants, until a domestic alternative matures. Budgetary constraints and bureaucratic inertia could delay production while competing priorities within the Air Force might slow procurement. Moreover, stealth is an art that demands continuous refinement. Codings degrade, sensors evolve, and counter-stealth radars advance. India must invest not just in the aircraft, but in the ecosystem maintenance, testing, and pilot training. Some skeptics warn that the AMCA could follow the same pattern as earlier delayed projects. Yet, for all its risks, the effort signals a turning point. Failure would be costly. Success would be transformative. If India delivers on its timeline, the AMCA will place it among a select group of nations alongside the US, China, and Russia that possess fifth-generation stealth technology. The implications are global. India could emerge as a supplier of cost-effective stealth aircraft for partner nations in Southeast Asia, the Middle East, and Africa. This would alter defense procurement dynamics long dominated by Western and Chinese manufacturers. The AMCA also anchors India's broader aerospace ambitions autonomous drones. Loyal wingman and directed energy systems designed to accompany the fighter into the next decade. More than an aircraft, it's a statement of arrival a reminder that technological surprise can still come from unexpected directions. How do you think this will reshape future military doctrine? Let me know below. As the prototype edges closer to flight, the AMCA embodies more than stealth it reflects India's evolving identity as a defense innovator. The world once viewed Indian aviation through the lens of imported hardware. Now, it watches with curiosity and respect, even if challenges remain. The trajectory is unmistakable. The AMCA symbolizes the shift from imitation to originality, from buyer to builder. In a century defined by invisible wars where radar echoes and data streams decide supremacy India's quiet achievement speaks volumes. The stealth India built may have begun as a secret, but soon the world will see what it never saw coming.